Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. And listen, I'm glad to have you guys here. Today is Friday, the 14th of February, 2020. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Now, let's get started. Uh, let's let's open up the charts right here. Uh, here's how the Bitcoin bull run will start at $20,000. <laughs> Oh, I think it's already begun, you know. But we'll read a little bit of this article. It says, uh, it says here, when we look uh, at cryptos as a whole, they tend to trade in two distinct phases. The first being dormant consolidation, which is followed by phase two, which is a high momentum phase. When you look at Bitcoin, we're starting to see signs that the dormant, dormant consolidation from the second half of last year is starting to change in terms of positive bullish momentum here. Yeah. Cryptocurrency's starting to go bullish. It's going up right now as we speak. Let's take a look at cryptocurrency market capitalizations right here. And we're looking at $306.7 billion with a Bitcoin dominance of 61.1%. I've been seeing that Bitcoin dominance fall. To me, that's an extremely bullish sign. A high Bitcoin dominance, to me, is 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 counterintuitive to a bullish market. But we've been seeing it fall, so that's very bullish. 61.1% Bitcoin dominance. And we're looking at a Bitcoin price of $10,288.74 right now. But things are moving up. Things are heating up in the cryptocurrency marketplace. Here's where the rubber meets the road, guys. We got a situation coming up in the world that is unique, never existed before. The central banks have lost control over monetary policy, for one. There's trouble coming to the world that's going to cause something, very unusual situation, where certain commodities are going to go up massive in price because they're going to go into short supply. And I can name these commodities for you. Uh, foods, all kinds of food. All food is going to go into short supply and it's going to go up massively in prices, especially against the backdrop of the Federal Reserve, which is going to have to go into something called helicopter money. I'm also anticipating... All of the stock markets on earth to close, probably within the next 60 days, to shut down. Okay, that's what I'm expecting. I know that sounds crazy to you guys. You've never heard of such a thing before, but I'm actually expecting them to shut down. The markets are expecting them to shut down. I'm expecting the Federal Reserve to keep the system going with the only tool that they have available to them, which is money creation, they're going to prop up the banks, the bigger institutions. They're going to prop them up with cheap, easy, funny money to keep the system going. Otherwise, the system would actually collapse. They're going to keep the system going. But what this is going to do is they're also going to have to spread the money out into Main Street, not just Wall Street, but they're going to have to spread the money out into Main Street, too. This is going to cheapen the dollar. In other words, they're going to capitalize the entire system with money. They're going to inflate the money supply tremendously in order to keep the system up and running. This is what they have to do. They're going to do what they have to do. And what's going to happen is the things that people need in times of need are going to be things like clothes, food, blankets, uh, they're going to need uh, medical supplies, they're going to need food especially, food and water. And so prices of these objects, these things, are going to go up massively. But at the same time, what we're going to see is, is re things like real estate. The bottom's going to drop out on it because the world population is going to start to decrease. And, you know, there's going to be more homes available than there are people to fill them. This is simply the way it's going to go. So home prices are going to 
going to drop like a stone. Nobody's going to be buying homes. Nobody's going to be buying cars. They're not going to be interested in buying a car. First off, there's going to be no place to go. The world situation is going to deteriorate to a point. And how is this going to affect cryptocurrency? You guys are probably wanting to know. Well, as the price skyrockets on the essentials that people need to live and to survive, and I mean skyrocket in price, this is going to have an effect on assets that are out of the dollar. And my best guess is that it's going to have a positive effect on assets that are outside the dollar, and faith is going to be lost in the dollar. This is my best guess. And the other currencies, too, like the Great British Pound, the Canadian dollar, the yen, all of these different currencies, faith is going to be lost in them. We're going to go through a momentous period in human history that's going to be written, up, written about in the future in the history books. Kids in school are going to have to study about this period, the next three years that we're going to go through, specifically this next year. It's going to be the worst, stinkingest time in human history, I think, as far as people trying to manage to survive. This is going to be rough, guys. This is what I'm expecting. I'm expecting something with real turbulence. And in this turbulence, I think we're going to see the cryptocurrencies do rather well. In fact, it could be absolutely shocking how well they do. But I'm not 100% certain it can go in this direction. You know? And this is why we're going to have to wait and see what actually happens with the cryptocurrencies. Uh, basically, the best thing I can tell you guys is right now, while there's still time available, batten down the hatches. Get your affairs in order. You got a limited amount of time left, probably, to get your affairs in order. And I've been telling people on my channels, I on Financial Turmoil Explained, and on and now on this channel, I don't think I've said this on this channel before. Clean out a closet in your house. Get some bottled water in there. Get some canned food in there. Get yourself maybe a, dry, a, a couple boxes of rice or something like that, you know. Get yourself some $5 bills. Have your cryptocurrency in your own possession, not in the, uh, have, have it in your own possession. In other words, have the keys to your wallet, have the keys to your addresses and everything. Have all that sorted out, uh, you know, and... Uh, this is going to be a rough time. I mean, fill your car up full of gasoline. Get yourself an emergency kit, which includes Band-Aids and a few other things, you know. This is time to prepare for a turbulent period in human history, I think, like you guys have never seen before. The last time we've seen a turbulent time in human history like this, you have to go back over 100 years ago. You know, humanity has a way of surviving. We will survive all of this, these crises, you know. But you need to prepare so that you do not become affected so much as your neighbors will be. Because your neighbors right now, they think everything's fine. They don't know anything's going on. They're just too busy working. You know, and the system has a way of grinding your nose down so that you can't see what's coming. I mean, it keeps you so so involved in what's going on with your place of work. Maybe that takes most all of your energy. You know, you, you work hard all day and you come home. I mean, you're so tired, the only thing you can do is have a quick shower and go to bed. You wake up the next morning, you got to get ready for work again. You don't have time for all of the stuff that's going on in the world, you know? And so when a crisis comes, it's going to take an awful lot of people they never saw it coming. It's going to side, sideswipe them. They're not going to see it until it's too late. But, you know, a cryptocurrency should be part of every, I think everyone's portfolio should probably, at this point, have a certain percentage, a small, very small percentage. And if you're going to get into cryptocurrency, always start small, guys. 
So if you guys are out there listening to me right now and you're deciding you want to f tip your toe in the water and try cryptocurrency, don't go out and buy a whole big lot of cryptocurrency when you don't know how to use it and send it off into oblivion because you, you got a well, letter wrong on your address. If you don't know how to uh, cut and paste in your computer, you know, then you don't know how to cut and paste an address. I'll tell you guys an interesting story. When I first started in cryptocurrency, I didn't know how to cut and paste. And I used to copy the addresses out by hand. Never made a mistake. I always double and triple checked. I got all the all the letters and numbers all in the correct positions and everything. I double and triple check it, and then I'd send it, and they would all, I never made a mistake. I always got it to the correct wallet addresses. I, was, I had to learn how to copy paste. I learned how to copy paste from working with cryptocurrencies. I had to teach myself. Nobody back in those days, there's nobody to teach you how to do this kind of stuff. Uh, I had to learn how to how to write different kinds of programs and stuff. I had to teach myself in order to get my miners to work and stuff because those early mining programs and everything, you had to be a little bit of a little bit of technical knowledge involved in it. Anyway, it was interesting times, but we're moving into more interesting times coming up right away. Coming up probably within the next three months. It's going to get really nutty out there. Bye-bye, guys. You guys have a great day, and we'll catch you guys in the next show. Bye-bye.